Hey guys, are you ready to sew your adorable little cup of cocoa? I hope so. So I have in your kit some fleece and the templates uh, for the marshmallow. If your piece is long enough, go ahead and double up your fleece. You can pin on your marshmallow if you want and then just start cutting around your little template. Okay, and then the same for the cup of cocoa. You might want to pin it down or um, yeah, definitely pin it down and then trace along or go ahead and while it's pinned to cut it along. Make sure to cut out the little hole in the cup um, for this template and then trace it on. I have my pieces doubled up. Uh, trace it on the top and then while it's pinned together you can um, You'll probably like fold over the piece to cut, like, um, let's see, like there in the paper, and the same for your fleece. Okay, so I'm gonna get my pieces cut. I have my cocoa pieces cut out, my cups, and my hot chocolate or coffee, my preferred beverage. And you'll need uh, four of these little marshmallows. And um, as you can see, the leftover fleece pieces you can chop them up and make confetti. Uh, you can use these to stuff the inside of your coffee cup. Um, I didn't stuff my marshmallows, but you could probably use those to make them poofy too. Super cute. Um, let us start with the face for our marshmallow. Um, go ahead and thread some black or whatever color you want for your face. Not one end of it. We are going to um, go through one piece of felt, but I think you probably could even get away from going through both sides because you won't really see the back of the marshmallow. So I'm going to do one gonna do a French knot for one eye so I got my knots and then for the French knot you wrap a thread around your needle twice well you can do it three times if you want bigger eyes you hold that thread tight around your needle and you put that needle right back really close to where you pulled up and then pull through And then I'm gonna go over. It's a little off. Let's see. It's not gonna be perfect because I'm winging it, but um, it'll make it a little whimsical. But you can also use a pen, pencil, marker to mark your spots. So I tied it around my needle twice. I'm gonna go back down where the needle came up. <laughs> okay. It's kind of tricky when it's a tiny piece. Kind of holding it down so I can get my needle through. And then when I get closer, then I'm gonna pull it tight. Okay, so now the smile, I'm gonna start in between the, the, the eyes and I'm gonna pull up. And then I'm gonna go right across from where it came up and go down. I'm not gonna pull all the way through. I'm gonna go about, well, I'm in the middle and I just went down as far as I want my smile to be. Okay, and then I'm gonna try to make my threads even. And now I'm gonna tuck in the needle on the other side of that thread and pull down and it hides the, um, <laughs> the little wonky, hides the little um, thread that holds, anchors that smile. I'm just going to knot it in the back and then um, I'm going to use some gray thread to sew my pieces together so that you can see it. Um, Today, I'll be demonstrating the blanket stitch. Uh, I don't know if you can see it 
very well because of the color of thread. I'm going to demonstrate with dark thread so you can see it. Um, and on the back, so it does, uh, I don't know how to describe it, kind of like the inside of a seam on your shirt, like a serged look. And these marshmallows also have the blanket stitch. I don't know how well you can see that. Ah, uh, see? <laughs> um, you might find it a little tricky. It's not one that I always remember how to do without looking it up. Um, let me see what you can see on the back, if anything. Um, and for sewing on the cocoa, since you don't see it that much, you can sew it on however you want all of the stitches on this but the faces are with the blanket stitch but for the sake of speed you and if you're not interested in learning the blanket stitch just whip stitch it all right so my little um monster frankenstein marshmallow here has just the whip stitch going all the way around so not perfect stitches i just did it in speed and then um this is the, uh, I'll show you guys, I'll show you in um, a darker thread so you can see how to get this blanket th stitch. So I've got my two pieces of marshmallow, the back and the front. And then I have some darker thread that you should be able to see on the white, like the Frankenstein marshmallow. And I knotted the end. I'm gonna pull through the front part, the front piece only, to hide the knots. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. It's probably gonna be hidden pretty well um, when it's attached to your cup. All right, so to do this lovely blanket stitch, you are going to go, we're going to go from the left to the right, a little backwards for me. I have to come um, first, come up, so go to the back, come up by the stitch that you made, okay, and then you're gonna just make this is a whip stitch right here, okay, and then you're gonna go to the left, front, try to keep it like even. I'm really not that good at this guys sorry and then don't don't pull all the way through you're just gonna put your needle through that loop and you're gonna pull and there's one so you're gonna go over again about the same space you're gonna pull don't pull all the way through and you're gonna pull so this is, it is easy, um, it doesn't feel like you're doing as much stitching, but I have a really hard time with my threads staying anchored and then looking even. So this is the blanket stitch, and uh, I'm having problems with my thread. So we will be doing this for the entire marshmallow here. Oh yeah, we're gonna come up. And then we're going to do it all the way around the coffee cup. Okay, I hope you guys can see this. Um, so now we're at a corner. One more, and then I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna show you the cocoa. Well, I'll show you the whip stitch on the cocoa coffee part onto the mug and then we'll do the cup. Okay, so that's your blanket stitch. It looks, well, compared to the speedy thing here, this looks like a graham cracker or a cheese it a white cheese it I guess. And this is the blanket stitch, which does obviously look better because I took my time showing you. So now we're off to the cup and beverage okay so here we are for the beverage part of 
um, the cup. I'm taking only one piece. Um, and I don't think I'm going to do a whip stitch. And I'm not going to do the blanket stitch for this piece. I'm just going to do a running stitch. I knotted the back of my thread. Uh, this is not a contrasting thread. So I don't know how much of it you're going to be able to see if you've done any of my former projects, you might remember a running stitch. Um, but this one, the stitch isn't really going to show through, so it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. I just kind of want it in the right spot. And um, I did come up through the back instead of hiding the knot because it'll be hidden when I apply the back to it. So, I mean, you don't even have to stitch this piece on. You could just glue it on. And I'm gonna go around the top edge of it. I don't normally sew with fleece so this is really nice and soft. I'm a very tactile person. I'm just going to do one last stitch here. I have a lot of big gaps in between my cup of cocoa. This reminds me of something from a children's picture book but it, I'm not sure what I'm thinking of. Uh, Alright so I'm just gonna tie a knot in the back and When you go to sew these pieces together, um, leave an opening somewhere if you plan on making yours poofy and three-dimensional. Oh, well, we gotta sew that face on. Don't want to forget that. So it's basically the same as we did for the marshmallow. So with a knot at the end of your thread, we'll just make a... And I, I, sorry, I'm eyeing it. You go ahead, tie, uh, draw a face on your cup. I'm just going to eye it. And I, for a piece this big, I don't know if I have much faith in myself. <laughs> but whatever, smiley faces make everything cute, right? So I'm going to do two wraps around my needle. Gonna go down near it somewhere. If you do three wraps or more, you'll have poofier eyeballs. So this one is really small. I have a feeling I did three. I've done four even. Alright, so I'm gonna go do my next eye. I might make this face a little small then since my eyes are smaller. And then wrap twice and go back down. Pull that needle through. Uh oh. <laughs> Oopsie. Let's see if I can tighten that little. Nope. So, how fun is that? Look at this wonky little eye. I didn't pull my um, French knot, I didn't hold it tight when I went all the way down. I wonder if I can. I don't think I've even ever attempted to fix it. Oh loopy French knot without um, doing another French knot nearby. So anyways, at this point I would recommend cutting it out and re-sewing it. <laughs> uh, but let's just move along and make the smile. Um, I'm gonna yeah, we'll just see how it looks. Yeah, not too bad. And then down there. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure I could just go and do another French knot over this one to make it look as big as that one. I do like how it has a like a 
perfect circle. I couldn't do that if I tried. Um, really hard. So, maybe he's just a little too hopped up on caffeine. I probably look like that some days. Um, so now, we got the cocoa. And I'm going to save... I think I'm going to save the marshmallows for last because it'll be easy enough to sew through just the top if I want to or it won't matter if I sew through the back um and also you know it's fleece you could glue anything together but anyways um you want to leave a spot open somewhere on your cup um to get some fluff in it if that is your intention I suppose you could stick a magnet inside it. The adhesive magnet stick to the back just fine. All right, so we're going to start blanket stitching and I'm gonna use some black thread so you can see it. Okay, I have a knot at the end of my thread. I'm coming up through the front so it's gonna hide that knot. You can trim it if it's too long for you. Okay, so I'm going to come up near where I made my first stitch, pull it up, this one is going to go all the way around, or through, sorry, and give it a little tug, and now I'm going to go through the front, nearby, pull it, but not all the way through. Gotta have that loop. I'm gonna slip my needle through that loop and give a tug. And I realized I didn't show you how to finish the last stitch on the marshmallow, so I'll be sure to show you that on the cocoa cup because you wanna. Make sure you can hide the knot. And with fleece, it makes it pretty easy to tuck the knot inside and hide it. So we're just gonna do this all the way around. Uh, I would say just try to keep like pulling it kind of tight to keep it anchored. So, um, just keep doing this all the way around. And go up your loop. I'm also really sorry that I do not keep this up close to the camera. So I really hope that you guys can see it, but also, uh, not being one of the best teachers, there's so many better teachers on YouTube who can show you how to do this. Sorry. Much better than me. I don't usually do <laughs> fancy stitches. Uh, but this is one of those stitches, the more practice you do, the better the stitches they look well that's with every stitch what am I talking about I have to keep remembering to go down the front I'm not used to doing that at all and just recently I picked up cross stitching so I'm going to be showing you guys how to make little cross stitch pictures little because big is like a lot of counting and I am not a fan of counting I have to count over and over it's a headache for me but for all of those people who cross stitch, kudos to you. You have a hundred times more patience than I do. Okay, so I'm gonna finish. Eh, I probably should have gone more closer to the corner for this edge right here. All right. Did you by chance have to uh, get more thread on your needle? 
to finish up. If so, tied a knot, tucked it in, and then um, to restart it, I'm coming through the inside again through my last stitch so that tail will be hidden. And I'm just going to pick up the way I've been going. So I'm going to be stuffing this little creature now. Uh, you could even use your thread bits as well. Not that those would make a big difference, but um, I probably don't want it to be too fluffy. So I'm just going to tuck it in. Just for a little pouch, poofy pouch, pop belly. So it's not too full. Um, you can use fiber if you want. You could probably use just about anything that would add some poof to it. And then I'm gonna finish up. All right, I think I'm getting to the last stitch. So. Just gonna stitch it as normal. And then I'm going to tie a knot. And it's gonna be down close, but not totally, because I think I'll be able to hide it. And I'm gonna go back to that stitch. Pull that. Oh no! Well, my thread went into being an escape artist there. So I've got this knot in there. And I'm gonna hide it through. It doesn't matter where you pull the needle out. It's gonna hide the knot really well. And then you just pull really tight. Snip really close, not too close. I'm gonna cut the fleece. And it's hidden in there. So he's poofy. Now we have to work on this handle. As you can see, that's all jagged. The um, stitches should hide it pretty well. And we'll get started on that. Okay, so it's time to uh, finish this cup with the handle part. So I'm gonna start with my knotted thread. Got a knot. I'm gonna go through the inside to hide the knot of the handle. I'm gonna just tuck it in. And then, oh boy, <laughs> doesn't want to tuck in. Okay. So now let's see. We're going to go back up where it is, uh, through the back as well. So I'm taking it and I'm going through the handle and I'm going back up where the stitch is. It's peeking out. Get back in there. And then... <laughs> it doesn't want to behave. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, that's close. Okay, so now we're going to, I guess it's going to be a little upside down. I'm trying to figure out how to show you without it being upside down. But I don't know if I can. Um, I, f I don't know why it feels like this is upside down to me. I guess I'm going right to left. Maybe that's part of it. So, sorry to be confusing you. Not my intention. And that thread. He is bad. Bad dog. Okay, sorry about this. Okay. So now I'm going to go through the back and come back up. And keep that loop. That thread's gonna make me crazy. Oh, goodness. This whole thing. <laughs> it's my 
stitches don't look so great. That thread, uh, I'm just going to have to trim it when I get done because it doesn't want to hide. Okay, so I'm making that. Okay, go around the curve. Oh, yeah, so my fleece looks a little choppy. And maybe yours does too. If you do tiny blanket stitches around this, <laughs> it looks like Frankenstein. Hold on, I gotta get rid of it. It's making me bonkers. Okay. Um, I was gonna say, if you do tiny stitches around this, it hides the um, choppiness of it. And, oh my goodness. And if you, it drives you nuts if it drives me nuts honestly i know i did it okay it's hard to see and believe right <sighs> sorry guys I, it could be also because it's black thread and i'm trying to show it so i'm going through the front and the back of this and i'm sure yours will look a million times better than this I probably should try to do tinier stitches. Um, and maybe this has convinced you to just abandon the blanket stitch altogether and just go for the uh, whip stitch. Yeah, I didn't do tiny enough stitches for sure. So, hope you have enjoyed me struggling. I hope it has been some amusement for you. <laughs> um... But yeah, it is actually a really pretty, fairly easy stitch. Um, I don't know really anybody who says it's their favorite though. Okay, so that's the end of this handle. Thanks for <laughs> bearing that with me. I think I'm gonna do a simple stitch down and then I'm gonna tie a knot and I'm gonna hide that knot but I gotta leave the knot on my needle so that I can hide it so my thread's a little short it's a little hard to tie a knot when you're dealing with a tiny bit of thread sorry you guys have to watch this painful struggle Kimberly is fighting with the thread on it I think I'm gonna make that knot a little close to the fleece to hide it all right now it's going to I'm just popping the needle in somewhere mm. Does it matter? I wonder where it's going to go. Oh, it's just going to hide right there. So I can pull tight. And step. And then that piece is hidden. And now it is time to get the marshmallows on. Um, so um, I just did a... Um, sorry. I just looped the thread through the back layer of the marshmallow and through the top layer of the cocoa cup. So for the marshmallows to get attached, I just did a couple anchor pieces through the top layer only of the cup and then I'm going to do it through the back layer um, of the marshmallow and then anchor it the cup and then go through the marshmallow and you don't need to do it many times at all and then you can do a knot and then just slide it through the cocoa cup I think I'm gonna try to make it a little tighter so you know I'll 
I don't know if I how many times I've already said this, but I just did most of this in black for you guys, black thread so you guys can see the stitches. I didn't realize when I made the samples that the stitches wouldn't really show up on the video. And then we'll just do the same with the last marshmallow. I'm gonna do another knot in my thread. And he's ready to go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I have him upside down. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Okay. Um, man, I hope you guys have a much easier and more manageable time with your fleas. So, my guy already came out of the needle. Alright, and then I'll do a knot and I will pull it through and then it will be all done. I have to pull all those threads through. And, uh, you know, you can put your marshmallows anywhere on your cocoa cup that you want. You don't even have to use both, but I think that the marshmallow likes to have a friend. So I hope that you can had no problem seeing the stitches the blanket stitch on this and I hope that you give it a try see how you like it oh it looks like a pop tart that's what it is not a graham cracker maybe a cheese it um so <laughs> I hope that you guys have a much easier time and that your thread and your fleece cooperate with you and that you love your little cocoa cup and that you will show me your finished project because you know I love to see those and you can always email them to the email that you got this video from or to the reference at shorewoodtroylibrary.org or to kpatton at shorewoodtroylibrary.org okay can't wait to see your guys's little project it's so cute thank you guys